Jalen Brown was a guy who was definitely a little bit more raw coming out of college as well. Sure. Um, like, like Tatum was definitely obviously coming out of the Duke top name guy. Um, obviously able to showcase his talents. Jalen Brown was a, a bit more of a I don't, project might be a little bit too far, but um, he, he had some development to do. Um, and I, I want to ask you, obviously being a, a Celtics fan and having watched it as these years have progressed, like for him to now be in this position where um I like to frame the argument as this because I know what the discourse is around Twitter and the media as a whole. So much of it is about, well, well maybe Jalen Brown is the better player or maybe Tatum isn't who we thought he is. And like, I think that's so it's unnecessary. I would wish that the conversation would be more about maybe Jalen Brown has just continued to progress to a point where he's even better than we thought he actually was. Um, so I, I want to ask you, what has impressed you the most about Jalen Brown's development to the point where, Again, like I said, he came in a little bit more raw. They weren't sure what the scoring, you know, ceiling would be for him. Um, and now he is, I think, without a doubt, one of the best all-around players um, in the NBA because we saw it on display this entire finals, what he was able to do defensively on the ball and as a help defender, what he's able to do as a scorer at all three levels, being aggressive, getting downhill, scoring in the mid-range. Um, and then in addition to that, his playmaking, um, obviously Tatum had better numbers, but he's another guy who – is just as good at getting two feet in the paint and continuing to make the right pass off of that. Um, so he just is such a well-rounded player. What has impressed you the most about his development to get him to this point where he's now the, the finals MVP? I think it's just the consistent growth that's most impressive, right? I think a lot of times when we look at players, we almost expect it to be like 2K, where like at the end of every season, you go up by three. You're an 80, right. an 83, an 86, an 89. But in reality, it doesn't work that way a lot of the time. Like you could have this huge breakout season. The next year, you kind of fall off. Then you have a great year and a down year. I think what's been most impressive, regardless of maybe what the numbers say, I feel like the growth has been so consistent really since his breakout year, which in my opinion was the bubble, 2019, 2020. I feel like at that moment, that's when I realized like this can be the second best player on a championship team and shit. Maybe the best player, if that's how you really feel, finals MVP. I, I don't really care. Um, but at that moment on, from 2020 season, I thought he took a big leap. 2021, he got hurt uh, at the end of that season. But 2022 with Ime, I thought he was had ever seen three. I think he offensively, although the defense wasn't as great as so on the previous year. I think this year was just the best season he's had in the NBA. The 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 combination of the best defender, arguably on the Celtics, especially if you take into account what he did with Luca this year. Offensively, he took a bit of a backseat. Everyone did. We added KP and Drew Holiday, but it was the lowest turnover totals of his season, of his career rather. Um, and then the playmaking jump in this playoffs, I think, was really impressive. Like I know. And I think everyone should know he's not as good of a playmaker as Jason Tatum. But if you look at Jalen Brown, the 2023 finals against Miami, and you look at Jalen Brown in the finals against the Dallas Mavericks, it almost looks like two completely different players against Miami. He, he damn near could not dribble the ball. Like he would put his head down. He would get double thrown at him. The zone would always mess him up. He almost would overthink what he was doing a lot of times. This year was completely different. He felt a lot more relaxed in those moments. I mean, he had the the big play in what was it, the game three or game four against Indy that he middle of the paint. He fucked White in the right corner. Derek White hits the three, kills the game for the Boston Celtics. Like he had these moments throughout these playoffs that the playmaking leap has been shown, where he went from a bad playmaker to, in my opinion, probably an average playmaker for a wing of his size, but everything else he brings to the table. So more importantly. I think the fact that he's just gotten better every single year and everything that's basically said that he can't do, whether it's he won't turn into a good shooter coming out of college, because I think you're right. He was very raw. He was really just an athlete or mm -hmm. whether it was his defensive questions last season or whether it was his playmaking questions because he was never a high assist guy. I feel like every step of the way where he has a weakness, he's able to work on that This season kind of showed all of that come together. I do think it was probably the right move between him and Jason Tatum. I think he had higher highs in this series, especially guarding Luca. I mean, I have the numbers here. He guarded Luca on 154 possessions, which ended up being 32 minutes of matchup time, which is just insane. Held him to 21 points, 40% from the field, 25% from three, five turnovers, and only fouled him two times. So if you look at the offensive numbers, it is pretty similar between the two. Tatum had some more assists, more rebounds. It's going to look more whole because I do think he's still a more well-rounded player, especially on the offensive side. But defensively, 
I look at both of these players, Tatum and Brown, had huge impacts just in different ways. I think Jalen Brown shut down Luka Doncic or as good as you can. I mean, these are phenomenal mm-hmm. numbers. And Jason Tatum kind of shut down everything else they want to do off Luka Doncic. We saw a ton in that series against the Timberwolves where high pick and roll with Luka, you bring up the five-man, Rudy Gobert, he gets into action, now we got lobs going. Since Tatum is able to guard five, since he's 6'9", 6'10", he's 230, he could rebound, he's our best rebounder on the team, that kind of shuts down a lot of what the Dallas Mavericks want to do. Now they have to set screens with P.J. Washington and Derek Jones Jr., who, one, are not nearly as good screen setters as Daniel Gafford or Derek Lively. Two, they're not really good three-point shooters above the break, so mm-hmm. those corner threes aren't as available. And number three, if they do want to attack downhill, they're kind of smaller players. It's easier to get in their way if they were to go up for a lob. So I think both of these players had high, high moments on offense and defense, but I do think it means a little bit more when you're going one-on-one with what a lot of people's best player in the world, if not second best player, and a lot of people's just best offensive player, you could go one-on-one and shut him down like this. I think that's where you give the nine and say, JB, you got it this time. 